new video, new day. We have successfully briefed, executed, and now we're back. It's time for the debrief, which many don't like. I'm not going to name names. It may be me. <laughs> uh, you know, it, 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 it actually is, I will, it is more, is very important, right? Because what's the point of going out and, and burning, you know, turning dinosaurs into jet noise if you're not going to learn anything out of it? And the debrief is, again, what separates us, right? What, what's the, to be able to extract it. So, Deuce, tell me about the debrief and why it's so important. I mean, the debrief is, is important, you know, for the reasons that you just said, like, that's where some of the learning happens. Like you can go be out executing a mission and be screwing up, not knowing why you're screwing up. And the light, the light bulb is going to turn on uh, in the debrief, if you will, which can be on an individual basis, which, Hey, we're just doing a two ship ride and the, you're the student who's upgrading vice. Hey, you're flying a large force employment exercise that uh, call it red flag or nor lightning. And now you're going to get the learning, um, you know, there at the end with everybody else. And after you've pieced together, you know, the, the entire mission itself. So that's why we debrief is to, uh, to get the learning. So that you're able to avoid mistakes in, in the future. So the general flow of the debrief, right? So you come back and, you know, questions on the brief. Maybe I should have asked that question before we left. Like, why did I? Yeah. What do I ask? What, what, are, what are my options here? Yeah. So, so that's what you're trying to figure out. Like, hey, I thought <laughs> you briefed this. Like, it felt like we did X, Y, Z. Um, you know, that that'd be a, the point where you ask that kind of question. Yeah. So, I mean, we used to say plans, products, or brief. So, did you have any questions or issues? Anything to talk about about the plan? The overall plan. Was there something wrong with, you know? what the plan was and if so why weren't you there during the planning phase but i digress <laughs> Valid. and then products you know because we go out with m lineup cards uh maps you know all your products everything you take to the aircraft and this is the time to go hey what could we have what did you show up in the jet and realize hey this would have been nice to know or have written down or have a map of or something like that right yeah that's right but yeah, the, the, you know, the products for, for the mission, you know, like maybe it's a large force employment exercise, you know, so something on the mission, um, you know, flow card, if you will, was off, which hopefully wasn't catastrophic airborne, but hopefully resolved there in the coordination brief, but that would all be, be things that you bring up. And then from there, now we get into actually, okay, you know, um, Safety, you know, safety training rule violations. We're going to, you know, talk about was there anything that we did? Because we, you know, we talk about this, you know, in the earlier part of the brief. We brief training rules. We use 11.214 as our governing doctrine for rules that we train by to keep us. And people say, well, there's no rules in combat. Well, no, but we like to be able to use the jet more than once. And so these training rules keep us able to do that. <laughs> uh, so we brief them. And usually 11214 standard, but we'll come back and go, hey, did you have any safety of flight issues or training rule violations, especially for a large force exercise? Because we want to bring those back to the debrief and fess up, right? That's right. And you fight how you train, too. So, I mean, good tactics are inherently safe. And if you're adhering to those and to the training rules, then, you know, we're not, not going to lose airplanes. Like, training rule violations are written because we've lost airplanes. That's why they exist. Yeah. Talk to me about the general flow of the debrief in from there. Like, what are you? What? How are you g getting those lessons learned out? Well, general flow of the debrief. So you have uh, reconstruction, you know, which will take place in in different forms, which we can vignette into here in a little bit. But you have reconstruction, then you have analysis. Yeah, you like that vignette. So reconstruction <laughs> analysis, uh, and then you go into your uh, lesson learned uh, kind of development, and then uh, your overall lessons learned from from the day, which you then uh, present to the members of your your flight. So what are you trying to do in in the reconstruction phase? Like, are you reliving the whole thing, or is it just highlights, or how are we doing that? So again, the standard answer is it depends. So for reconstruction for uh, basic fighter maneuvers, for example, figuring out like, hey, what position were the jets relative to each other? Weapons employment, did we achieve a kill? Yes or no uh, for, for each of the sets. And then 
as you go through that, and then you're able to uh, paint the picture for um, you know overall weaknesses uh, for the day and what the um, individual that you're flying with needs to work on you know for next time. So that leads into the analysis phase. As far as a large force employment exercise reconstruction, generally starts with the shot validation. So starting off, and you have you know the 2D picture of all the all the jets from uh, blue air, from red air, where the surface to air missile sites were, where the targets were. And then it's simply figuring out who's alive, who's dead, and did we kill the targets? Yes, no. Um, you know, and that's um, all reconstruction. Now, does it necessarily need to go from, from start to finish? Well, it depends, uh, again, on, on the mission itself. Um, you know, and again, what kind of level level is it at? If it's just home station continuation training, you know, maybe like, hey, I know that uh, sets two and three in my BFM flight today were, were heinous, so those were the ones that I actually want to look at, and then we'll just, you know, maybe maybe save ourselves some time and not look at the rest of the sets uh, from there. Um, the way you're able to do that is just really from experience and then understanding what actually happened airborne, you know, so having situational awareness, we'll say from that. Um, but from there, I, leak, I go into analysis, so that mission analysis part where I really need to nug out and figure out, well, hey, like, what, who is my audience and what are we going to take away from this, this entire mission uh, today? What were the weak points? Why do we have failure? Why do we have losses? And then um, go into uh, the details from there. Is the method, you know, DFPs, lessons learned, uh, debrief focus points, if you will, is that still employed widely today? Yeah. Yeah, the methodology is, is still valid. So what you're talking about for debrief focus points, like I might not even know what they are, you know, walking into the debrief. You know what I mean? So, like, they're not necessarily going to present themselves during that reconstruction or analysis. So, once I have that that level of situational awareness, which comes with experience, uh, I can walk in and I already know what my debrief focus points are, which will then focus what I look at in the reconstruction. Like, hey, at time X Y Z, um, you know, blue two dies. Like, man, well, we need to kind of peel back the onion. Uh, if it will, from from that time to where the trains got off the tracks, and which resulted in a blue death, and that's what we'll we'll focus on. It's not like we just get back and then it's like, all right, ready, ready from the beginning, play. But it's structured, right? So you got your DFP, your contributing factors, and that eventually gets you to a lesson learned. Yeah. So overall, I need to know like what my debrief focus points are for the day, and then it's going to be something factual, like, hey, like. Why were five of ten targets destroyed? Why did blue four die? You know, it's got to be something uh, factual uh, in that nature that that's measurable. And then from there, we go with our different uh, contributing factors, which I like to list out in order as a technique with a timestamp on it. At this time, this happened. All right, and then of those contributing factors, I'm then going to uh, pick the one which is either most causal or most interesting, or what I want to present to learn from from the day. So you've got a little bit of latitude there, but I'm going to call that my primary contributing factor. Now, of my primary contributing factor, I get into, well, what kind of mistake was it? So we have uh, three basic kind of mistakes. So I have an input error, I have an output error, or I have a decision error. So an input error, what that means is that I didn't have the information that I needed uh, airborne, or that information might have been blocked uh, because I was busy doing something else. But either way, I misperceived or I didn't have the information available airborne. An output error is more of, hey, I had that information available to me, but just by virtue of technique or left hand, right hand, uh, if you will, I didn't execute um, properly. So it could be like a young guy in BFM, you know, they just don't have the experience yet for the hands. So, or they didn't have the, the technique kind of solidified for that. So that'd be an output error. Overall decision error is I think about, Hey, this is my overall game plan. So my overall, uh, game plan was flawed. 
uh, for example, so or at least missing some component, uh, if you will. So from there, of those three, now I'm going to pick my overall uh, lesson learned. So the way that I go about uh, for a lesson learned, so number one, fighter pilots like pictures and pop-up books to help illustrate <laughs> uh, learning points for us. So um, the way that I can do that is I can draw on a board or I can take a snippet uh, from the tapes playback or from the iCADS playback uh, if overall, or I could like write down like a time and then say, like if we're in an LFE playback, hey, go to time X, Y, Z, then they call up that time. Now we're all on the same sheet of music. We all have a common mental model for what I'm talking about. And now, for example, for a decision error, which is where we live, kind of big picture for lessons learned in large, large force employment or on a missionized ride, that's generally where the learning is going to happen. Um, overall, I talk about, hey, here's why, here's the DFP, and here's why it led to failure today. Now, here's five minutes of weapons academics, if you will, on my new game plan or my new addition or perhaps contingency for the game plan. And here's how this uh, new item works, five minutes on that. And now using today as an example, here's how with this new uh, contingency or difference in game plan, here's how we could have won today. Now the coup de grace, if you will, <laughs> is... How can I take it and I can apply it to a completely different mission that wasn't today? That's where you really make your money as a weapons officer or, or as an instructor uh, in the debrief. Again, getting to that learning uh, there as a fighter pilot. Again, so like, you know, we've been talking about this for like a handful of minutes. This process can be several hours. You know, for an LFE, uh, like the weapons school, we're talking maybe it's a four to five hour process, you know, in total. And that's even before I hand the, the pens over to, to the instructor for their comments. DFP, why did Dagger 1-1 get shot down? And I think it wouldn't be an output yeah. error. It would be a plan error. The contributing factor would be his entire plan. And the lesson learned would be send in the B2s next time. <laughs> That's certainly valid. Uh, Tom Cruise, he, uh, yeah, he does definitely busts for uh, mission planning. <laughs> definitely a mission planning error. Or complete lack of integration of OCA seed, I would add. Yeah. Ah, that's that's valid. He thought there was only four aircraft on that entire <laughs> boat and had no one else to help him. Yeah. Total lack of OCA integration. Once you extract all these lessons learned, I mean, what is the what is the etiquette in general for the wingman, like a young wingman throughout this debrief? Should they be asking questions? Should they wait just like the brief? And should they be arguing? They, sh they should definitely not be arguing. Uh, right. Yeah, argumentative um, young fighter pilots in the brief and debrief, uh, not only are they clearly violating uh, rule number one, don't be a douche. Right. But, yeah, they're definitely going to make a name for themselves as being somebody that you don't want to fly with. Um, so proper etiquette would be, hey, write down your questions, hold them to the end. You know, there's the whole kind of presentation, if you will, that the uh, flight leader instructor needs to get through, which might totally answer your question. So, again, it would be redundant to, to bring it up, but hold your questions uh, to the end. Uh, for that, but you know, good flight lead, good instructor, always going to ask. You know, from top level down, whether it be um, strike team lead or flight lead or wingman. You know, that's generally the order that um, will take questions uh, in the debrief. But learning needs to occur at all all levels. Again, from instructor, flight leads, all the way down to uh, wingman, because that's how we get better. As, as a force, you know, one of the big things that uh, differentiates uh, United States uh, Air Force, uh, Navy Marines, we'll say, you know, U.S. DOD overall from, um, you know, foreign nations is that um, we leave rank off uh, in the debrief. Um, you know, if you go to uh, LFEs and say Turkey, for example, like they handle that uh, very differently in that, you know, it's a big part of their culture for saving face. Whereas, you know, for us, like we don't,
care about that in the debrief, you know, and there's a certain etiquette to that, but um, generally speaking, you know, rank is off in the debrief and we want learning to occur at all levels so that mistakes aren't continually made uh, in the future. And then we can be, uh, you know, improve upon our lethality overall as a force. And, and this changes too, what, based on what you're doing, right? If it's CT versus an upgrade ride, but even more importantly, combat, because combat, you don't have time to be sitting there debriefing forever. You've got to change it. So how does it change when you're in combat? Well, in combat, I mean, you gotta, gotta focus on like, Hey, like, what did we go out and do today? Like, did we achieve the commander's intent or not? You know, thinking of like a close air support, um, you know, kind of environment, like, okay, we did, did we have a comment to model, yes or no? Like, maybe it's me just calling a JTAC and be like, hey, dude, were those bombs good? Did they go where you wanted them? Yeah, okay, cool. Like, how could we we have done it in a more efficient efficient manner and gotten on a common mental model there, there as a team? You know, maybe that process is like six to nine minutes, but it's still the point of still having that debrief so that you can get the learning done um, and be overall more lethal as a force in the future. We talked about it in the last video of how you can set the tone with a crappy brief, right? You can set the tone as a wingman when you don't know anything. You can set the tone as a flight lead when your plan is stupid, like Tom Cruise. You can set the tone in general yep. with a bad brief. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but even if you have the best sortie in the air, if you come back and you're just like, ah, I don't have anything, because there is no such thing as a perfect sortie, right? There's always something to learn. Hasn't happened. Yep, haven't seen one. Maybe it's just me, but I haven't seen it. <laughs> so we always have something to come back to. And if you can't say, hey, here's what we need to do better, then you really just wasted your time. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I mean, like overall, like the whole, like what would you say we're trying to do solve with a debrief is like preventing you from making the same mistakes in the future, right? So if you keep making those same mistakes in the future, then you're effectively wasting your time and gas later on. So those are all things that you that you need to figure out for how you're going to mitigate that so you can go on and, you know, be a better fighter pilot for it. Again, there's a high level of discipline. There's a high level of time involvement. And then internalizing it, right? So you take those lessons learned, you internalize it like you Mm -hmm. talked about to apply it to the next thing, because then if you don't, it's becoming a trend item. And, And instructors notice trend items. Oh yeah. They stick out like a sore thumb. So again, that's what kind of, you know, we'll separate the weaker swimmers from the stronger ones, you know, kind of overall is a good fighter pilot, you know, always going to make mistakes. But the question is, is are you able to learn from those mistakes and then apply it to future sorties or even combat, especially combat sorties? Well, I think we've debriefed the debrief to the extent that our viewers will watch. Do you have anything for the debrief else to add, Mr. Deuce? Well, I guess to wrap it up, I, I would say, you know, it's just understanding your audience and what they need to learn for the day. Again, that basic kind of emotional intelligence, if you will, for like, hey, like what's going on overall with, you know, with my forces for the day. And then what are we going to all take away uh, from something? You know, for example, again, in the large force exercise, like we're not going to focus on one little execution error from one fighter pilot in one formation. It's overall learning, you know, for everybody that's in the room, fighter pilots, command and control, intel, everybody that's involved. Well, you're, you're, so you're going through all this debrief stuff, but who wins? Clean Block 30 Big Mouth or a clean Fat Amy? Oof. For BFM, starting off with individual range, a, the Clean Block 30 is going to win. <laughs> that's Most all of I the want time. to hear. That's all I need to hear. <laughs> that's, that's all I care about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. there you go. Dude, th- thanks so much for coming on the channel and explaining the brief and the debrief for the kids at home. I'm sure they're all going to appreciate it. Uh, and probably people who don't even fly, because I think this is stuff you can use in your daily life. Businesses can use this stuff all the time. So yeah, thanks for doing this, man. Yeah, thanks for having me, Mover. It was fun. All right. We'll continue not being a douche, and we can't wait to see you again on the channel. <laughs> I love it. Mm-hmm.